So, <clears throat> CoQ10. A lot of buzz about CoQ10, and it's all over the internet, and a lot of the science around it is maybe not so well founded. There is some, some good science. We're going to talk about that evidence today, but you'll hear a lot of things about CoQ10. One of the things you'll hear is that you really, especially if you're a baby boomer, you need to take ubiquinol, the reduced form, instead of the oxidized form, ubiquinone. What's the evidence behind all of this stuff? And first of all, what is CoQ10? Uh, so, uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but first an introduction. Ford Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack prevention. Um, most of our patients come to us thinking they want to prevent a heart attack, and they do. But pretty soon thereafter, they start learning that there are worse things. Uh, I had a patient say to Amy last week, well, you know, there are worse things than a quick um, fatal heart attack. It, for example, living for decades with um, dementia, uh, heart failure, or um, uh, a stroke. So, <clears throat> same things pre that prevent those prevent this. A lot of it has to do with diabetes and inflammation, but those are that's another story for another time. So, what is CoQ10? <clears throat> and what's the evidence behind some of these things that are uh, claimed about CoQ10? Another claim you'll hear is uh, only 4% of CoQ10 makes it to your bloodstream. Uh, so, therefore, you have to take ubiquinol. Another claim is if you're 60 or older or 65 or older, you really need to take ubiquinol, uh, the reduced form, not ubiquinone. In other words, ubiquinol instead of uh, CoQ10. Now, what's the evidence behind all this? And uh, <clears throat> first of all, what is it? It's ubiquitous in animal tissue. And guess what? That's how it got its name. It's found in the mitochondria, the inner membranes, and we'll We'll show that in just a few minutes. It's a coenzyme. Now, what's a coenzyme? It's a part of a protein. It's a non-protein element that is needed by a protein enzyme to do its function. So, for example, iron and the heme uh, compound are coenzymes for hemoglobin. Hemoglobin can't do its work without the heme uh, molecule, which, and it can't do its work without iron. Same thing here. ATP can't do its work without uh, CoQ10. We'll show it in a few minutes. Uh, it's a powerful fat-soluble um, antioxidant, CoQ10 is. So it's very much involved in, um, in helping and being helped by other antioxidants like vitamin E. It is the critical part of uh, the ATP. Uh, molecule, which is critical in turn to uh, the elect uh, oxidative phosphorylation, and we're going to get uh, biochemically geeky for just a few minutes. Um, so you remember the uh, we break down glucose, so do yeast. That's not a big deal. We also then do what's called the tri uh, TCA cycle. But 96% of our energy uh, comes from breaking those down even further, and that happens in the powerhouse of the cell, which is called the mitochondria. Uh, CoQ10 is critical to the function of mitochondria. So, <clears throat> uh, CoQ10 is the third largest selling supplement in the U.S. And um, again, one of the claims is that only 4% of CoQ10 makes it to your bloodstream. Um, actually, CoQ10 is not uh, seen that much free in the bloodstream. It's actually often bound to LDL, which again creates a whole, new, a whole other set of stories, but which we're not going to take the time to go into. Um, it's very expensive, 27 cents to a dollar and 17 cents per pill. So <clears throat> it would be nice to know if it works, wouldn't it? Well, 
under the category of what is uh, CoQ10 and what's the what's oxidative phosphorylation and what's the mitochondria. This is a picture of the mitochondria. It's part of the of all of our cells. You remember in one of our other videos we talked about uh, I believe it was is it Mayo Clinic in Rochester? They actually did some um, uh, high intensity intervals interval training for adults, 30 year old young adults and uh, 65 to 80 year old adults and demonstrated doubling in a lot of the mitochondria based on uh, the, the powerhouse within the cell based on high intensity intervals. So assuming that these um, mitochondria are important, that's why H I, uh, high intensity intervals are important. This is the CoQ10 molecule. It's located in this inner membrane of the mitochondria and it's used in that elect, uh, electron transport oxidative phosphorylation again. We're about to finish the, um, the biochemical geek uh, section of this discussion. So, so <clears throat> this is uh, from Dr. Um, Sinatra's uh, page. It's a clear uh, thing here. The equinone uh, moiety or portion of the molecule followed by 10 isoprenyl units. So coenzyme Q quinone 10, 10 isoprenyls. Uh, I actually like this image better. Because what it does is shows more of the CoQ10 family, and it demonstrates something very interesting, at least to me. Um, remember the discussions about ubiquinol, the reduced form, and ubiquinone, the oxidized form. So this is what's called, a, so again, this is the quinone, uh, quinone section and the uh, 10 isoprenyls. Same one on both. But this was ubiquinone, which they say you can't take and absorb very well, especially if you're older. It's the oxidized form. Oxidation is loss of a hydrogen atom. You put those hydrogen atoms back and you get the reduced form. Again, just one last comment for the um, biochemistry folks, that actually makes that a ketone and that an alcohol, that OH. So, <clears throat> we're getting a little bit of understanding of where it's located, what the molecules look like, uh, some things like that. Now let's start looking at the literature to see what it tells us. In this one, they took some athletes. They did a double-blinded study. There's a lot of really good research out there. It's not that there's not good research. Here's what you'll see. Great study. Um, good improvement in blood levels of CoQ10. And improvement of peak performance of these athletes. Another study. Um, this was on... Uh, uh, arterial disease, uh, heart, cardiovascular patients. They got improved, they gave uh, oral CoQ10 and got improvement in the blood levels and improvement in the inflammation status. So, sounds pretty good, right? <clears throat> well, then you start going to other studies. Also, a very good study. Look, this one, um, looked at uh, exercise performance in just adults, not so much athletes. Again, they got good blood levels, but they really didn't see a significant change. Um, <clears throat> it's been noted in very, very sick patients in the hospital with, with sepsis, life-threatening infections, that their CoQ10 levels are decreased. So in this study, again, another good study, they gave them CoQ10. They saw an increase in the CoQ10 and uh, in the CoQ10 levels, but they really didn't see any other difference in these in the status of these patients. I'm going to digress for a minute before we dive back into the literature. Um, here's part of 
part of the problem and one of the side stories on CoQ10. You know, they'll say, look, CoQ10 is depleted by statins. And that's true. So look at the uh, metabolic pathway for statins, starting with acetyl-CoA. Uh, then you get to HMG-CoA. Um, and guess what? The statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. So they stop this process at this point. And guess what? That stops the process of making cholesterol, LDL. Uh, <clears throat> it also stops the process of making CoQ10, which is about two layers above. So yes, there's clear evidence that, uh, and, and clear scientific, uh, biological, biochemical evidence that there are uh, CoQ10 problems associated with statins. But again, let's go back to the research, and you see this same pattern. Uh, really good research being done. It does appear, so here's part of the question, do you really not absorb CoQ10? I'd love to see it if any of the, you viewers out there have some good data, have some good evidence that shows that uh, ubiquinol is really significantly better. Uh, I take it. I take uh, ubiquinol when I can find it and uh, co CoQ10 when I can't. And we'll talk about why I do later. I, I think there's, there's clearly enough evidence here to indicate that it's worthwhile. I just don't think the evidence is conclusive. I think there's still something that we're missing that um, is causing a lot of <clears throat> red herrings in the, in the findings on these, these studies. Again, this uh, sepsis trial. Now here's, here's part of the problem. <clears throat> and this has to do with um, trying to judge. So if you look at performance, like that very first study where they took the athletes and they found improved VO2 max. You're, you have to go way back in the metabolic processes and athletic physiology to link that to mitochondria. What you're, what you're assuming is that the mitochondria work better. However, in order for, uh, to, to see that, you have to be getting uh, plenty of uh, oxygen from the lungs the heart and blood have to be uh, transporting that oxygen. And I'm not even mentioning car carbon dioxide here. The muscle has to be getting appropriate oxygen flow. And that has to be diffusing back to the mitochondria. So I think that's part of the reason why you don't always, I mean, you can see these good studies. You can see this improvement in blood values, blood levels. But quite often, you're not seeing um, significant um, end effects like athletic performance and some of the other things we'd like to see, like the sepsis patients getting better. If you're interested in looking at this, uh, reading about this data, this is one of the best uh, studies on it. It's, this is not a study. This is more a lit review in and of itself. It's a summary of the other studies that have been um, done regarding CoQ10 and ubiquinol. <clears throat> it was found in the Oxner, um, Oxner Journal. I didn't know Oxner had a journal, but I'm not surprised. It's a well-respected medical uh, program in New Orleans. Serves a lot of the uh, Central and South American community. Um, and it was in spring of 2010. And of course there's been a lot of data uh, since then. But again, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of conflicts in the data. Now, <clears throat> so you, you, you talk about levels of evidence. Level one evidence would be multiple uh, clinical trials, randomized clinical trials. There have been multiple randomized clinical trials. The problem is the level one evidence conflicts with itself and or the studies conflict with each other. So. At the end of the day, I still think we're back down to trying to interpret that. People ask me, me what I do. Like I said, I do take um, ubiquinol when I, uh, when I happen to see it. I, 
um, don't spend a lot of extra effort and time to get it. Um, do we recommend it for our patients? Yes, we do. We actually measure uh, CoQ10 levels for our patients and uh, look for a little bit higher level than you tend to see in some of the literature. We look for uh, 0.1 to 0.2. Thank you for your attention. And again, please give me some content. Give, give me some, uh, some suggestions on where to find uh, better evidence on this area.